that. Which so this much meeting is that. being live streamed. Yes. <laughs> I want to do all the sharing. Come on, son. That was a good crack. That sounded really good. And Kevin is literally seeing it before I am. All right, we'll just do it. Why, hello, and welcome to issue 611 of Geek in the City Radio. I'm one of your hosts, Aaron Duran. I'm one of your other hosts, Spinarita. And I am your other other host, Cable Washitani. How's it going, everybody? It's been uh, a busy day. Yeah? Yeah, for me, anyway. I'm, 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 I'm. I'm back to work, and that's a lot less... Uh, I don't think exciting is the right word, but I'm just going to use the word exciting. It's a lot less exciting than uh, the week I've had, uh, plus the my my vacation. Right. Just a lot of a lot of things happened. On um, on vacation or on work day today? Yes. Yes. Oh no, work is fine. Oh. Work is like super chill and productive, and I feel good about how things are going at work. Um, it's it was the vacation. And then the days after vacation, uh, and like some of you guys have heard some of this, like I got like really bad food poisoning, not while I was in a country that has no clean running tap water, but at the Atlanta airport. Um, and so I was down for a couple of days and then, and then we had water leaking into our uh, house from the bathroom sink. And uh, we have, turns out we have burst pipes. And so now we're having all of the pipes in the house replaced. Yay, home ownership. <laughs> uh, Good times. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we could have not done it that way, but it was established that the, the pipes are original and the house was built in like the early 60s. And uh, and they they noted that like basically once one goes, everything is on its last leg and it's just gonna be like a whack-a-mole situation that I don't wanna live through. So I'm like, nope, just just got the whole thing. Start over. Well, that's fun times. Yeah. Just burn it all down. <laughs> I'm I'm a I'm a big pro, I'm a big fan of like you know what let's just get rid of all this and just start fresh. The whole house. <laughs> uh, no, no, definitely not looking at a different home now because we're putting all our money into pipes. Yeah, I was gonna ask you like how so not a not a quick little fix. It, it, it could have been, but like the the cost to repair just the, where the leak is that one area of pipes is under just under three thousand dollars. To redo the whole house is a little over seven. So I'm like, why would I pay like forty percent of the full price to do one thing when I know that in the near future, I'm going to have to do it again somewhere else in the house. And right. if we don't, this is one that we caught very, very quickly. And it like, I don't feel like it has done any damage to like the floors, the walls, the wood, any of that. If the next time a, a pipe bursts, it's somewhere that it's not quickly visible and evident. Right. Who knows how much other damage can happen to the house. So Look at you being all smart, unlike our landlord when we moved into this house. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to turn a profit on this house. I'm trying to successfully live my life inside of it. So that's true. I don't know if our owners are are trying to turn that much of a profit. I think they didn't have a lot of money when they bought this place, so they didn't have much to do recommended things when they bought it. And, and they that's... bought out of for they bought it out of foreclosure also, so the bank was really trying to dump it. Right. But I mean, like at the end of the day, whether they're really doing it or not, or really trying to gouge anybody or, or not, the, the, the fact remains that they purchased a home in order to make money from it. They're not That's living true. in it. They're not, you know, it's not for their family. It's, it's for income. That's true, I guess. And, yeah. that's, and that's a whole thing that I can see like Cable like holding his tongue about. So let's not get into that. Um, mm -hmm. 
but yeah, it's just like all of these things are kind of happening all at once, including like financial stuff. Like I spent money to go on this international trip at a time that felt really weird. Um, and then I came back and now we have to like pay for all these pipes. And I just bought a new car. Also that, that's right. So I'm like, oh God, oh God, it's all, it's all the money is gone. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it will be fine. And then of course the other fun part was just again, like travel, international travel right now. Uh, I felt really, really guilty about that. But weirdly, or I don't know, maybe, maybe other people who spend more time in other countries could speak to this better. But I felt better being in Mexico during COVID than I feel being in this town sometimes. I felt that way in Madrid, even though their vaccination numbers, when we went there, Spain was only like 23%. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, and they had just reopened their borders because Spain is one of those countries where like something like 20% of its income, like it's like it's gross national income comes from tourism. Mm-hmm because they don't, they don't really make a lot of stuff. And I've also learned that the, the Spanish, I want to say work ethic, but it is kind of their work ethic. Basically the way the Spaniards, Spaniards run, do business, like they start later in the day and then they, you know, like a siesta is still the thing. They take like two and a half, three hours off around three o'clock. So they are very frustrating for every other country in Europe because say like someone in Berlin is wrapping their day up around five or five 30 mm -hmm. and you know, someone in Spain calls them and says, all right, so let's have that meeting. And they're like, no, we're done. We're done. What do you mean you're done? Well, we're, we're done. They're like, well, we just came back from, we, we took our three hour lunch and you know, we're going to go and then we're going to work till eight o'clock. We're going to drink till 1am. So it, they really require on that tourism money. Um, but anyway, they had just opened their borders. And with the rule of everyone was masked, unless you were eating, like actually like eating, drinking, or in your own residence outside and everyone was masked up. You didn't see, you didn't even see like fucking dick noses or chin diapers. Like everyone was masked up no matter what. Uh, including in the street? Yeah. Okay. Is that, I, oh I, I, yeah. I we were actually there when they had lifted the mask mandate for being outside in the streets. And even then, maybe only a quarter of the population took masks off. And if someone who wasn't masked walked by, like they all, everyone gave them a look of like, ah, you could be a peg carrier. So they would all <laughs> get like, a, they'd get like a wide berth and yeah. Uh, the other thing what, that I really appreciated was like, you, you go into any business or place of service and they're like, here you go, here you go. They're just like ready to pump some hand sanitizer into your dirty little palms mm, um, totally. or they have like a little station and if you walk past it they're like uh you missed the you missed the hand the hand sanitizer please go back there i'm like oh sorry i didn't you know because i usually have some on me anyway um yeah and i i, I, don't, I didn't see or hear people bitching about it like you know we had to take a lot of taxis and buses and stuff like that and like nowhere did i feel like people were just like fuck this shit man Right. Uh, they uh, places like the airport. Um, they have multiple stations where that'll scan your temperature. Right. And it's really quick and easy to get a COVID test, which is required before you travel back into the U.S. Had my yeah. results in under an hour. Um, the the worst part about it is that the place had no air conditioning, and the air, the part of Mexico that I was in was hot as balls all day, all night, no reprieve. And so to go into a business that doesn't have AC was like, please don't, please don't make me be here. Um, uh, but like, otherwise it was relatively in and out. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that was our thing too. Like we had to do it coming back at the Madrid airport. You had to do it before you could get back into the States. Mm -hmm. And it was cheaper to do it in Madrid than in the US. Um, yeah, it, it took... We were in line for 20 minutes and the test itself took 30 seconds. And then within 45 minutes that you, you'd literally get an email from like the Spanish government saying yeah. <laughs> negative, not negative. Like that, I mean, that was, that was it. It was like, okay, you're, you're negative. Show this QR code wherever you go to get back into the States. I was like, oh, okay, nice. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So I, I, you know, I initially was like feeling really guilty because I, I did participate in a lot of like tourism commerce. I, I, the purpose of going was, you know, funereal in in its original intent. But, you know, I guess the idea was like, well, now we're all together, like, you know, like 15 people in my family all in one place, which is really rare and hard to do. So we, you know, we spent a whole week together and I was like, oh my God, I'm like, I shouldn't be doing this. But that like very quickly went away because people are, people are doing it right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it can be mitigated if everyone decides to be, you know, a supportive and productive member of society. Now, if, you know, they could get as many vaccines as we have here. Yeah, that too. Anyway, we got to be careful. Otherwise, we'll just go down that road. Ugh, I know you're right. We can, so we we're going to talk on. about we're going to talk about trailers and animated an, animated. Well, yeah, there was animated stuff. Yeah. Animation. Um, we're still watching animated shows. That's true. A lot of them right now. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. off the air, Cable was taunting me because it looks like Wizards of the Coast has pulled me back into magic with the new mm -hmm. Innistrad set. And then he said, Oh, wait till you hear what's coming out next year. So the announcements from Wizards came out today. This is just for the standard sets. So these are the four sets that are scheduled for next year. They are starting with a return to Kamagawa. Oh, shit. But that was like, that, yeah. It was like, that's like 90s, right? Was, or is that no, early 2000s? That's early 2000s. Okay. That was Damn. like 2004, 2005. Okay. But here's the trick. It's called Kamagawa Neon Dynasty. It is set 2000 years after the last set. And it is cyberpunk. Oh, shit. This is the first time that magic has entered the future. Where well, it's going to be centered around yeah. technology okay, and yeah. not, yeah. Because they did time spiral, but that was still future fantasy. It wasn't tech. And it was also the what they thought the cards would look like in the future, which is completely not what they look like. I know, but that was still a cool 10 years thing. down. Yep. Um, That's so, awesome. Yeah. It is a fantasy cyberpunk. Uh, the set features a new emperor of Kamigawa and a cyber ninja planeswalker. That is then followed up with Streets of New Capit Capenna for the second quarter. It's a city built by angels, ruled by demon crime families. Well, that sounds dope. And apparently this set has, it's kind of a, a crime noir setting and may or may not feature Elspeth, the planeswalker. Um, quarter three, we return to Dominaria uh, for a lot of the, uh, for the 30th anniversary. So it's kind of a uh, throwback to all the classics. Sure. And then quarter four is called the Brothers War. Oh, that's a uh, Urza and Mishra, right? It is. They're going oh, back shit. to Urza and Mishra. That's some antiquity shit. Yes, it is. Oh, man. Yeah, you were right. I'm all nerdy for it. Okay, so that's the standard sets. Here's where things get weird. Um, for Commander Legends, and this is where your guess is completely right, Aaron. Commander Legends will be their next foray into Dungeons & Dragons, the battle for Baldur's Gate. Oh, fuck! I called it. <laughs> you did. But that means those cards will be available for modern format. Right. Uh, there is also, that's going to be in the first quarter. Uh, the second quarter is a new unset called Unfinity. What's an which, unset? Uh, unglued, unsanctioned. Oh, okay. Unhinged. Like yeah. Unhinged. Okay, right. Yeah. The the broken cards. That's like that's where I got my um Jester's sombrero. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's where I have uh Ashnod's coupon. Nice. Yeah. And uh there's uh, also 
Hold on, hold on. We cannot gloss over something called astronauts coupon. No, Ashnod. Ashnod's coupon. There's a well, character I don't know. Named... I don't know who Ashnod is, but I'm still interested. It it's essentially uh, uh, if you play Ashnod's coupon in your game, uh, you select target player. Target player must buy you target drink at the end of this game. I need that card for real life. I, I have sure. that in a hard sleeve and I just keep it with all my commander decks. I'm like, slap. There you go. Thanks. And I'm like, fuck you, Cable. Um, <laughs> so this will be a new Unfinity set. It will also be science fiction based. It is, the idea is it's set in a retro futuristic space carnival. Um, Double Masters makes a return in quarter three. And then there will be a new jump start in, er, in quarter four. Jump start is where you buy two packs. Mm -hmm. You open them up, you shuffle them together, you have a deck. Oh, so they come with mana? They are, yes, and they are tribal decks. So you you grab a pack of goblins and a pack of werewolves and shuffle them together, and you have goblins riding werewolves. I don't. That sounds fun. Yeah. Jumpstart was, came out and was really hard to get uh, in the middle of the pandemic, or not the middle of last year during the pandemic, not the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> We're still in the middle of the pandemic. Um, well, the middle of pandemic keeps shifting depending on when it potentially yeah, ends. Yes, it does. <laughs> 2024. Um, then lastly, then there's a whole... Then they kind of released something where they said they're going to release special sets and are, are you familiar with Secret Lair? Where it's like... Yeah, and I yeah, I have a couple of them. Okay, so they're um, going to keep doing them. Secret yeah. Lair, but they're also going to be doing um, Commander decks and special and then full um, sets for the, and it's called Universes Beyond and it's other properties. It is other licensed properties. They're going to do the first one is going to be four Commander decks set in the um, realm of warhammer 40k wow yep oh my followed god by, followed by a full set of the lord of the rings tales of middle earth well matt screwed yep. <laughs> um and then the uh, the secret layers will be fortnite and street fighter 2 sweet because I had heard they were basically like almost like licensing the mechanics to other. I mean, it was all going to be under Wizards, but it's like, yeah, so hence the Warhammer thing. Yep. I don't so know how I feel about Wizards of the Coast banding together with Games Workshop. That's just a, mm -hmm. it's like a Voltron Monopoly monster mm -hmm. thing. It really <laughs> is. It's kind of, it's kind of creepy. So those are, that's all coming out for 2022. So if you've sworn off magic, um, I'm sorry, they are coming for you and your wallet next year. Yeah. I'll say. Um, it's nuts. Like I found out this information this morning. And I'm just like, what? Like I still haven't recovered from, we're returning to Kamigawa, which according to many of the players that play at Guardian over the years, Everybody hates Kamigawa. No one ever wanted to go back there. And yet when Wizards put out a poll like two years ago, it said, what, what setting would you want to go back to? The number two most requested setting was Kamigawa. What was the first? Just Dominaria again? That I don't remember. It. Yeah. I liked Kamigawa. I remember it being pretty cool. It had really cool like synergy cards and stuff. Mm -hmm. It really did. Uh, yeah. I, I like it. I, the, the first... Um, constructed deck that I bought for Merrick when she was first getting into magic was from Kamigawa. Nice. And it was one of those decks that she took and it started playing it out of the box and it's like, oh, that's a that's a devastatingly powerful deck. Like it had yeah. one of those one, two, three card combinations that just mm. swept your board. Nice. Yeah. That, and then did like, like 10 points of damage. It's like, uh, okay. I'm just going to concede now. <laughs> yeah, Jen, I taught Jen to play Magic right when I think the first Ravnica set came out, the, mm -hmm. the, the three blocks. And the who are the red and blue? The, is it? Yes. Um, is it Gil yeah. Mages? Yep. Yeah, she 
I, you know, she learned how, you know, inst- um, and she figured out the mechanics really quickly. And it became one of those things where like, she had like, is it Gil Mages? You know, tap one to do damage, target, target creature, untap when a sorcery or like an instance cast. Mm-hmm. And they were all common. They were all, you could have up to four each in tournaments. Mm-hmm. And it got to her like, fuck if she has a lightning bolt in her hand she can hit me eight times plus the lightning bolt and i can't do anything about it yeah she got really good at that (laughs) well constructed and well played red and blue decks are fucking brutal like i I know other people swear by other things but the combination of just being able to do direct damage and keep your opponent from doing anything that they want to do it's like yeah how it's like, yeah, I don't board. care what you put on the board. I'm just going to throw lightning bolt after lightning bolt after lightning bolt at you. Yeah direct, con- yeah, direct damage and battlefield control is just brutal. Yep. That's like in real wars. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Also that. And yeah, lots of, lots of, this, they did say that this kind of hints at the, um, like pairing up and doing more D&D and, Lord, Lord of the Rings and Warhammer means that uh, since Wizards of the Coast parent company is Hasbro, Hasbro is probably going, oh, okay, here are all the other IPs that we have. Right. right. Which I will pay real money for a Transformers block. Ooh, yeah, that's true. I'm going to hold out for the My Little Pony magic deck. Didn't Secret that, Lair do a pony? Yes, they did. But they did, yeah. it's entirely possible that they may end up doing a, a po- pony set. Like, even if they didn't do a full set, if they did like a, a couple of commander decks, oh God, those would sell so I well. I'm about to put my money where my mouth is. <laughs> yep. mm-hmm, yeah. And Hasbro, well, they have the Star Wars license, but not for games. So they couldn't do that. Right? Unless no, they, they couldn't they'd have to get permission specifically, but they don't actually own the IP for it Mm -mm. for, for a game. Right. But they have plenty of other IPs. I'm sure they'll be be fine. I mean, Hasbro absorbed all of the other toy companies, right? Yeah. So technically Hasbro actually has, I think they have the aliens and predator IPs for toys and games. I, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibilities to end up with a He-Man and the Masters of the Universe set. Hey, wouldn't that be a uh, opportunity? And She-Ra. Oh my God, that'd be amazing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, She-Ra. Oh man. If, All right. the, if they do not make Commander decks from She-Ra and My Little Pony, which by the, by the metrics where women are playing Magic, it is in Commander because it is the informal competitive or informal but still competitive and people are playing the format then they're leaving money on the table yeah totally Mm. well crap yep we should like we should put who wants to like put money on this right now before it happens feels like a sure bet you know oh it's gonna happen Totally gonna happen. I, I think I think we may have to make a. Ch- we'll look at all of the IPs that Hasbro has. We'll make a chart and then make everyone's names, and then everyone can just kind of bet in where they think that it's gonna go. Right. And what year? <laughs> Norm, <laughs> uh, Magic: The Gathering, the one game that will make you want to flip a table at a twelve-year-old owning you mathematically. It's not wrong. I wasn't 12, but I I delighted in just walloping experienced players, all of whom were men. I was usually the only girl in the room. Yeah, that's that's still my major complaint with all of these games is the the ratio of men to women is still like 30 to 1. That's why they need a My Little Pony deck. People all with like card games and stuff, right? Card games. Um, the miniature the, games, everything RP- but board games. Well, and the RPG ratio is really shifting too. Mm. It's like forty percent women players now, and it's been like steadily growing too. God, that that metric seems 
it feels more like a 50 50 split from that's what it that's what it feels like for me too but yeah yeah but as always like portland is a weird you can't take a you can't take an accurate test sample it's like when i would hear horror stories about com- women in comic book shops and i'm i 100 percent believe them because i've seen it but i was like it doesn't happen in this town because we're that's the one place that rarely happened you know prior to moving to portland i think i'd only ever played a tabletop rpg with another you know female identifying person in the room once and they were new to it they weren't really into it they were they were just sort of like there with their partner mm. yep i've met a few of those too should we uh start talking about whatever a spider-man can <laughs> let's I, let's start with um in order like we have three coming up oh There's, right let me Oh, my order of release again. date? Yeah, because there's Shang-Chi. And that's September. Right. The Eternals are November. And Far From Home is December. I like that I can just say Far From Home and everyone knows that I'm talking about Spider-Man because it's yeah. fucking Spider-Man. Um, so yeah, then let's do Shang-Chi. No, it's it's No Way Home, right? It's No Way Home is the No name. Way Home. You're right. Far no From way home. home is the last one. It's no Way Home. Yeah. It matters. keeps messing me up because I haven't seen... Well, I haven't seen either, but. You haven't seen Far From Home yet? I still haven't seen it. I, I might watch it tonight. I don't know. It's it really good. Oh my God, you really I've, have to. I've never not wanted to see it. I just haven't. It's super good. Yeah. But you rewatched all of the movies and then forgot to watch that one. Uh, yeah, I must have forgotten. I mean, you get to Endgame and you're like, well, I'm done. It was the end. It said so on the title. It's right there. Anyway, no, I, I think I legitimately forgot that uh, there was one more after that. Because then we almost started watching WandaVision again. Oh, geez. And I was like, oh, it's too soon. <laughs> um, I think with the, the I watched the, the last uh, full trailer for Shang-Chi and still got a lot of the same beats that were in teasers and, and little promos here and there. Um, yeah. I think the biggest thing, literally the biggest thing that I've noticed in it is that uh, the cage match that Shang-Chi is in somewhere in the movie is with the goddamned abomination. It's the abomination. Yeah. Which, and, man, that's a that's a reference to a few years back. Mm-hmm. And like I started checking IMDb and then went, oh, no, I need to not look at this because I'm going to start seeing things I don't want to. Mm. Um mm. But it is uh, what's his name? Uh, Tim Roth. Yeah, Tim Roth is the abomination. Yeah, Tim Roth is credited as the abomination in That's Shang Chi. Cool. So it's I like, hope he looks better now. There's been a decade, so. Yep. Um, Wait. So what else was he in? The Incredible Hulk. The Edward Norton Incredible Hulk. Oh yeah, that was not great. So he's reprising his role as the abomination, cool. which mm-hmm. means if you're putting shang chi in the cage match with shot with the the abomination we know who's walking out of the ring right which is a great way to explain to the audience just exactly how much of a badass this zero powered martial artist is right i mean unless he's got something in on him at the time but yeah you're right yeah i mean we don't Um, know that he's gonna Unless it's a death match. Yep. Yeah. Is it is it is it definitely a death match? Uh, that I don't know. We don't know. And it also could be a thing where like because we know that one as, that one assassin's after him too. We don't know the context of how Shang Chi gets out of that, but either way. Right. Even if he just holds his own to a draw until a Dan S. Machina shows up to move the story along, it's still damn impressive. Mm-hmm. True, true. I'm I'm like I'm being pedantic. Um, a lot. They give you a lot more backstory in this uh, in this trailer. Uh, uh, they they do. Um, but I think it's uh, it's funny when that trailer got posted. There were folks uh, talking. There was one Twitter user in particular that tweeted back at Marvel. It's like, man, you have released so much footage and all of these trailers. 
all of us know exactly what the movie is about right now. It's like, we, we already know the story and someone tweeted back at them. It's like, y'all ain't seen shit. And it was Simu Lu. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also, and, and they're he's and, like, yeah. yeah. And their response to Simu was like, I have just been owned by Shang-Chi himself. I'm going to go sit over here and shut up. <laughs> yeah. Must be nice. Um... <laughs> and also like Marvel's now become notorious for filming shit just for trailers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Keep people guessing. Yeah. But I know that based on the, uh, um, there was the red carpet premiere for it last week, and mm-hmm. all of the reviews have been, go see the fucking movie. Yeah, the embargo's lifted, so it's it's getting really strong reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, even with and the it's embargo on, only, so it is. I, I learned that today, and I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. Um. I am planning on going to see it opening weekend. I'll go with you. Yeah, I wanted to see if we could talk. I, we I, can talk I, about I, that. Well, I, I, would, I a, would like to. I would like to discuss that because mm-hmm. I, I have a Cinemagic. I have a Cinemark membership. I can get us discounted tickets and cheaper popcorns. Ooh, I'll, I'll we will talk. Yeah, we'll oh. talk. After. Yes, we will mm, talk. After. Movie theater popcorn. Mm, the best. We need a whole bucket. You guys are you guys are on your own. Anyway, Kay will not, Kay will not be watching. And all we hear from the, the next to us is just. Oh, 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 oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if this film, like other Marvel films, is drawing off of a particular arc from a particular writer, or if it's going to be an all new origin story, whatever, whatever the case may be. But uh, yeah. I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I think they're drawing from, like, they've had to deconstruct and reconstruct a lot of his history since the character that Tony Leung is playing is named Wenwu, and he is the the master of the Ten Rings. Yeah. But Shang-Chi's original father was Dr. Fu Manchu. Right, who they don't use anymore. Correct. No, because they don't have the rights to, and they, yeah, it was not yeah. a Marvel created character. Um, and it's also horribly, horribly racist. Yeah, who mentioned it's a horribly racist character mm-hmm. played by, uh, well, many non Asian people, mm-hmm. um, including well, Peter Sellers. You guys have Christopher mentioned, Lee. Mm-hmm. oh, interesting. You guys have mentioned the Fu Manchu character before, but I don't think I was aware that there was a connection to shang chi it, it yeah it, that's the whole idea is that uh, this character was the son of this evil world worldwide uh, super villain gotcha. which is why mm-hmm. you know he is this great grandmaster of fighting um, and I've, I've read in some of the reviews that he ends up being a pretty sympathetic villain and you don't end up and this doesn't really give it away, but they said by the as the film progresses, you don't actually like loathe the guy, right? Like he's a much more sympathetic villain than you're gonna than you're gonna think going into this movie. Yeah, I get the feeling I'm gonna get more Killmonger vibes from Wen Wu than anything else. I'm getting that vibe too. Yeah, mm. a, a um, Killmonger who is more established and is keeping his people safe mm-hmm. through a through no pun intended an iron fucking fist, mm-hmm. but still keeping his people safe. You know, so uh, it, yeah, yeah. I'm um, jazz for it. it Even every, Jen's into this one. She's not mm-hmm. a big Marvel fan, but she's like, I got to see this. I I do take Kevin Feige with a grain of salt, but he has been very vocally supportive of this film. Like in a way that, like on the red carpet, he was like, "I've been wanting to make this film for the 20 years I've been working for Marvel." Yeah, it's like. I, I don't know if you're just saying that or if that's really true. If that's really true, then this is your baby of a movie. Yeah. I that's, think. Go ahead. It's nice to hear hear that being said, or like to, to hear that that's that's his feelings, if it is true. Mm-hmm. Because I know that uh, a week or two ago there was a little bit of contention between. Uh, the comment was made in regards to I think like financial decisions on how the movie was being released, but they refer to the film as like an experiment. 
Yep, that was yeah. a different executive producer. Yeah, yeah, and the, yeah. so and the, the thing is, it's, it wasn't. Uh, they weren't talking about the film itself being an experiment. They were talking about like the way it's being released in the current market for the current conditions that we're in. And Simu Lu, who has been, you know, wonderfully outspoken, and I'm glad that he feels uh, empowered to do that. Uh, you know, because we had that whole conversation about um, the lawsuits with uh, Scarlett Johansson and others. Um, and like, you know, make maybe, maybe they felt like they, they couldn't speak out sooner or blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's, it's nice that he feels like he can, he can like speak out when he feels like, like the film is maybe being undermined, mm -hmm. even yeah. though I think he kind of misconstrued the statements. He did. Um, I know, I know Fahey did some damage control between the two companies mm -hmm. when yes, he, he was did. asked about it. And his answers actually made sense. Uh, I, I understand what he was saying. Um, as someone who has also taken things out of, at, read something a certain way and just have flown off the handle, I also get where Simu is coming from. Mm -hmm. um, my my great takeaway from all of this is that Disney's current CEO, Bob Chappick, just needs to shut the fuck up. <laughs> and also maybe not be the CEO. He's so far been a complete disaster for that company. Huh? There, yeah, there's, I because I follow a lot of like the weird Disney blogs and there's apparently rumblings within the board of like, yeah, we picked the Bob. The, we picked the wrong person to replace Bob Iger. We've made a huge mistake. Um, Bob apparently Bob Chappick's background is more financial, and Iger was very because Iger became CEO when Disney was at its peak austerity program, and he was like, "We're done doing that. Mm. We can't make money if we're not being creative. So we're going to double the Imagineer budget. We're going to do this. We're going to do that." And they're like, "But we're not making money," and he's like, "Well, we're not gonna if we keep being boring." So, wrong. True. Yeah. True. This is very true. Yeah. Yeah. Bob Chappick just needs to shut the fuck up. Sounds good. Yeah. Along with that car horn. Yes. Um, and then there's the Eternals. Yeah. I. It's weird. Like I'm. I'm gonna see it. It's probably the thing within the Marvel in its own, even in the comics. I have the least amount of interest in. Mm -hmm. But. I think I'm going to see it solely based on the director and that it looks gorgeous. It really does. And I think that there are some, the people that they've cast in the movie are a wonderful, like the ones that I know are mm -hmm. already great actors. Yeah. Um, and like Selma Hayek is the leader of the Eternals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, okay, I'm in, done. <laughs> Like, also, sorry. Go ahead. As like a little sidebar, I like to remind people that the reason why you're seeing Sama Hayek more and more lately is that Harvey Weinstein is in jail. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah. She was one of the first ones to call him out and got blacklisted for damn near a decade. Mm. She's back. Yay. That's fantastic. Yes. Um, anyway, sorry. <laughs> I I think that like my my take on the Eternals is also fairly, I know nothing about them. Yeah. Like, um, the trailer looks like a lot of things that have come before. But the trick is, is I, I think that this one's, because it's Chloe Zhao, I think we're all going to be very, very surprised. Um, since none of us know what it's about it's going to hit us all out of left field. Yeah. I like that she pushed really hard for a lot of location shoots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly there's a fuck ton of green screens, but. Uh, so yeah, we, you have a ton of effects, obviously. So I think right. it's, it's, it, it's nice to have that balanced with practical backgrounds. Yeah. When I think her attitude was like, the world is gorgeous. So why are we not going there to shoot? <laughs> Like, why are we not going to the steppes of Mongolia? Why are we not going to these fjords? And is it any cheaper than paying a place to create these environments? Is it mm -hmm. really any cheaper? Right. You know? Because it's not necessarily better. No. 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 Um, I don't know if either of you have seen Nomad Land, but if you haven't. Not yet. Well, Nomad? 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 Nomad Land. That was I haven't, that, but I heard it was good. It's Gord. That's her film. She directed that also. Yes. Yeah. It's Academy Award winning. 
It mm. is. It's beautiful. It's great. Like, not usually a selling point for me, but. But that it was a selling point for me for watching the Eternals. It's like, uh, okay. <laughs> that it's an award-winning director. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I'm, I don't know anything about those characters, so it's, it's hard to get excited. Also, when they first started, you know, advertising this movie. I think Angelina Jolie was like the the lead face for it, and I don't really care for her, so I I did not expect to be interested in it. But you know, obviously, I'm all in on this fucking universe, so I'm gonna <laughs> need to know how it all ties in together. And yes, it does look gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And if if it turns out to be like a really great story that like means more to me than I thought it would, then all the better. There was yep. a point. There was a point where I was like, I don't fucking know who Wanda is, and I, I don't know, like, I don't know anything about her or backstory. I don't know that I'm invested. And WandaVision was my favorite of the series, so yeah, I, I'm I'm learning to be more open minded. That's fair. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's, well, it's it, always yeah. a good time. It's basically mm-hmm. good news and that's people. what Cable of the Eternals is that a Kirby thing? Yes. That was Kirby made him first for. Yeah. Um, yeah. Matthew and I were talking about this yesterday. They, um, when he returned to Marvel for after uh, doing DC. the fourth world stuff for DC right. and it not doing as well as they were hoping, um, he went back to Marvel and he got Captain America, Black Panther. There was one other that i'm forgetting and then um they gave him this new book called he he says i want to do this book called the eternals yeah so and it was during that period of time where they're just like stanley was apparently just leave him alone let him do whatever he wants (laughs) right they're like but this is weird we don't care just do it um he he was apparently um Kirby was reading and studying up on um, ancient astronauts and that whole uh, period of uh... yeah this would have been like he probably that was right on the area when like the chariot of the gods book came out Mm -hmm. a lot of stuff from the 70s about how we have been visited in the past by ancient astronauts and that was the premise of the book that's why they came here 7,000 years ago yeah. And see, that's kind of a selling point for me. That's that's interesting. I like learning about weird, uh, I don't know, cultural phenomena like that. Well, if you, you should read at- Chariot of the Gods. It's it's a trip. Like you're not going to believe any of it, and it's pretty far fetched. But considering it was one of the first books to be like, what if humanity was visited thousands of years ago by aliens who taught us stuff, and then they went bye. <laughs> We're taught each culture a little bit of something. Mm-hmm. It's right. it's a trip. It's a trip to read. I mean, but you have to be careful with that because that's how you get into, you know, like the ancient aliens territory. Oh, like, no. Oh, totally. no, no. These brown people couldn't have made this. Aliens did it. Yeah. Yeah. That... Oh, my God. I just had this weird moment. Can you imagine, Cable? And Denise, like, if there was a time at Marvel when fucking Kirby and Larry Hama could have worked on a G.I. Joe book together. Dude, just two grizzled old veterans that love comics are like, we're going to do this. We're going to do this toy book. Let's do it. That would have been dope. I think I w- I would have paid real money for yeah. a Lara, Larry Hama penned, Jack Kirby drawn G.I. Joe comic. Hell yeah. Ooh. Oh man, that would have been good. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. yeah no. um, <laughs> I, I was going to mention to to Bean that if you look at the names of the uh, the Eternals characters, it blends into the backstory of they've been here for 7,000 years. And if you look at mythology across the world, versions of their names are in different, uh, uh, different historical, historical histor- texts. Yes, and different mm-hmm. mythologies. So like Fina is Athena. Um, I, lo- yeah. I love that sort of stuff. That's why it, it, but it's all spelled differently, except for Gilgamesh, which is actually spelled Gilgamesh. <laughs> there you go. So it seems like it seems like that'll have something for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's going to look gorgeous too. So, 
but then of course we have no way home which is the most anticipated trailer of this year i believe like i had like three people yell at me today it's like oh my god watch this trailer i'm like <laughs> christ okay yeah it's like well, no we have to yell at you about it go watch it i'm like fine <laughs> um that's why i sent the text i'm like hey we should probably talk about this today um, um yeah, it, it just hits all my nerd stuff. And I'm not even big a Spider-Man fan. I like Spider-Man, but I'm not like, I'm not, I have no Keelan King. Um, I like Tom Holland's Spider-Man. I do, yeah. Spider-Man. It's fun. Um, um, I have been waiting for the resolution of this since I watched uh, Far From Home in the theater. Um, God, was it, that was 2019? Yep. Jeez. Yep. Yeah, it was one of the last things I saw in the theater. I think I saw that, and then Birds of Prey, and then lockdown happened. Birds of Prey was the last thing I saw in the theater. Yeah. Um, um, but like, since since for the way that Far From Home ended, it's like, okay, how are they going to get out of this? And mm -hmm. this looks like a whole bunch of, oh, this is a horrible way to get out of this. <laughs> Um, this is a storyline from the comics. Okay. Very Hardly. much. Yeah. I'll, I'll the, be right back. You go ahead and yeah. yeah. So there was a, as part of Civil War, um, you had to pick a side. You had to be either if you were a team cap, it meant you went underground and, and you were hiding from the government. And if you were team Iron Man, it meant that you revealed your secret identity, went public and that registered with the government so that you can continue your superheroing activities. Was it the Accords? Uh, no. Okay. Um, this, I mean, that, that was the, the movie's analog to that. Gotcha. Um, so in... Oh my. Uh, sorry. People are sending me work messages. Um, so as part of that storyline, um, Peter Parker came forward and said, my name is Peter Parker. I've been Spider-Man since I was 16 years old, blah, 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 blah. And then there was a huge fallout from that. Like the daily, like J. Jonah Jameson, like from what I remember nearly just cl closed the bugle. It's like, wow. it's like, cause he was fuming that it's like, I have been, I have been employing Spider-Man to take pictures of himself this entire time. <laughs> I was gonna say it seems like he's taking it personally. Oh yeah, I guess I guess he if anyone has a right to, <laughs> it's Jonah um, Jameson. There was a lot of uh, stuff between uh, May and Peter that was a lot of her getting over the fact that Peter had been lying to her for years. Right. Yeah. Um, and then kind of proved the the entire or disprove the entire theory that she was this frail old woman that couldn't handle it. It's like, now she handled it fine. She handled it way better than Peter did. <laughs> yeah. Um, but eventually they got to a point where Peter wanted his anonymity again. And he made a deal with Mephistopheles. And well, Mephist it was hmm? more than that. Yeah. Aunt May gets killed. Yeah. With, by an assassin who's meant to kill Mary Jane. And it hits Aunt May. Mm. and kills Aunt May. So that, and then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, then he makes a deal with Mephistopheles. Mephistopheles goes, all right, fine, and erases everyone, the fact that everyone knows that he's Spider-Man to no one knows he's Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. um, but the spell is such that if he, like, it's still in place from what I understand. Because yeah, but like him and MJ have made like he's I mean what it really came down to is that Casada didn't like the idea of Peter Parker and Mary Jane being married. Which is dumb. Like is I, dumb. please let characters get married, please let them grow old, please let them die and have I legacies. Know. Anyway. Um but the the uh the whole, that's what they're replicating in um no way home is now strange as the person that's standing in for Mephistopheles and doing away with this. And it looks like by Peter's insistence that, well, maybe not everybody. <laughs> like uh, Peter being Peter. Peter being Peter. So yeah. 
it looks like the spell goes awry and that's also contributing to multiverse bullshit Ooh, which i'm pumped for yeah <laughs> uh i Nor norman mentioned in the chat a few minutes back that um since there's now confirmed a multiverse that could mean that this abomination is either could be could technically be the Ed Norton Hulk, which means somewhere out there, there could be an Edward Norton Hulk. I mean, I mean, it, probably not, but I like that idea now. You know? Except that I think it's just that. Oh no, because it's. Well, the, the, the. That's the same timeline, huh? The annihilation yeah. that we've yeah. met. Abomination. Abomination. Abomination that, we, that we've seen in, within the MCU was. Uh, created to fight the Edward Norton Hulk, right? It, Aren't they different Hulks? I thought they sort of retconned no, the Ed Norton stuff. It was a, no. It was an no? attempt to create the super soldier serum, but also using banners um, stuff. Just to deconfuse, we're, we're, talking Sorry, about separate, we're talking about separate things. They retconned, um, like Edward Norton just morphed into uh, Right. Mark Ruffalo. That's that's what I was about it. to say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So same yeah. character. It's the same character. Same it's the same timeline. Of the character. Yeah. Like, Got, okay. Gotcha. That's why Ruffalo in Avengers makes the comment of the last time I was in New York, I broke Harlem. Right. Because that's where his his fight with the abomination took place. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I I must have remembered that wrong. All it's right, also so. yeah. It, it's also why um, William. What's that guy's name? The actor that plays Thunderbolt Ross. Uh, I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It, like he's reprising his role. It's why um, William RDJ, Hurt. William Hurt. It's why RDJ was in The Incredible Hulk as the MCU's Tony Stark. So it is, while it is not part of, it is not promoted as being, or wasn't originally filmed as part of being the MCU, it has since been adopted and morphed in, you know, like it's been jiggered into the mcu yeah. everyone's like yep there it is we don't watch it but it's it's part of it okay yeah just i, I remember it. not watching it during the yeah. the long haul i had seen it in its original time um yeah but anyway it, it has since been retconned into the infinity saga so it is oh. it is part of part of that timeline so that there is not that so then there there is not a multiverse option for the norton hulk because norton hulk is ruffalo hulk right yes cool cool cool, cool. and Crap. edward norton is notoriously hard to work with so that's mm -hmm. that's what Zach is uh just mentioned a, a minute ago he said that he got recast because it's so difficult yeah mm -hmm. i'm sure that there, are like there are different versions of his story so like that sure I'm, I'm sure some people find him difficult to work with others might just describe him as particular right yes um i, I since that's the same language that gets applied to women, women. who stand up for themselves I, I i i try to consider that maybe that's not necessarily true that's fair um what is true is this trailer looks awesome. Oh man! So it, it, from what it sounds like, we've got up to four members of the Sinister Six. <laughs> yeah. Who and, that? Well, we have an on-screen Molina as Doctor Octopus. Oh my God! That was my favorite part. Hello, right. hello Peter. Right before that, we have. <laughs> William Defoe laughing and a pumpkin bomb. Mm -hmm. Right, because um, William Defoe played the Green Goblin right. slash Norman Osborn. Yeah, in yep. the um, what was that? The, the first, second, the second the, Spider-Man in the Toby verse. The Toby the first Raimi one. Yep. And um, then uh, elsewhere in the trailer, there is a glimpse of the lizard and a glimpse of Electro. Have we seen Electro in a movie before? Electro and the Lizard were in the Garfield verse. He was yeah. never the Lizard. It's always been the Doctor. I don't think they've ever had him as the Lizard yet. No, in Andrew Garfield's movies, he was the Lizard. 
So he was. He was never. The, he was never the lizard in the Maguire movies. Right, I knew mm. that. Um, and yeah, he he was the first villain. Like the first Garfield movie is uh, oh Spider-Man versus the Lizard. I totally forgot that. Yep. And I the don't second like movie, the Andrew Garfield movie, so sure. And then the second movie is uh, versus Electro and the Rhino, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a rumor that in between those lightning bolts on the trailer, mm-hmm. there's a lot of sand. Oh, okay. So Which that would be, be Sandman. Mm-hmm. And then there's some debate on that. There's a line towards the end when Peter's in the suit, in his like an actual like suit suit. Mm-hmm. There's that voice that says, did you really think you were getting everything you wanted, Parker? Some people think it's better to come in a batch. I think it sounds a lot like Keaton. I, I would think it would make more sense to have uh, Keaton reprise his role as uh, as the Vulture, since the Vulture yeah. is one of the original members of the Six. Yeah, and oh my God, he was so good in that movie. Mm-hmm. He's I, a I, terrifying villain. He is, yeah. because he's really good at it. He's played heroes, and so he knows how to play villains. Yeah, but even like their their portrayal of this version of the Vulture is really, mm-hmm. that conversation he has with Peter in the back of the car when he says, like, you know what I could do to you? You know, it's, it's oh, it's just fucking chilling. He was great. It's like, look, that. I just want you to go. I want you to show my daughter a good time, but not too good of a time at the dance. And mm-hmm. enjoy the rest of your life. If you try and stop me, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, Seriously. it was that it was that thing of, like, I know that you know that I know. And also, I'll start with your aunt. Mm-hmm. I'll start with your family first. Very sinister. Oh, so good. So good. No, I'll watch Um, that again. But yeah, because the the original six were Octopus, Mysterio, Sandman, Lizard. Not Lizard. No. I'm confusing it because my the giant oversized comic that I had that had Spider-Man versus the Sinister Six also had Spider-Man versus the Lizard. So um had gorgeous full full splash pages of spidey versus a specific villain each when he fought each of them so sandman Hawk, uh mysterio yeah um vulture electro electro and craven the hunter Ooh, oh i don't know anything about that guy and we've never seen him on screen before no we have not there, there is the possibility of Scorpion because we did meet someone who could be Scorpion in um, Homecoming. Mm. As oh, yeah. Kevin's pointing that out because he's the one that talks to him in prison. He's like, I hear you know who Spider-Man is. Like, if I knew who Spider-Man was, he'd be dead. Walks yeah. Off. <laughs> um, yeah, we still haven't seen Craven yet. Um, this is a not a... T- a few years ago, uh, the podcast that Mark Bernardin's on, he talked about how when they were first assuming there would be a Black Panther 2, he went on this whole rant about how that's how you bring in Craven. You bring in this great white hunter that gets into Wakanda and wants to hunt the most dangerous prey in the world. And mm-hmm. it's not Spider-Man, it's Black Panther. He's like, you could tell this whole colonialism story through this villain who has killed everything on Earth except for this. The way he broke it down, I was like, oh, shit, I want this movie. Mm -hmm. That would have been great. (laughs) Yeah. That's Um, why we've seen that character in a movie already. Craven? Yeah. Like, briefly, but... Nope. No? Mm Mm-mm. Okay. I believe Um, you. It just feels familiar. I don't know when I would have learned about it or learned about that character or... Did you read any Squirrel Girl? I know. Oh, okay. I I, uh, I read some uh, Patsy Walker. Mm. But no Squirrel Girl. Uh, I think Squirrel Girl is one of those comics in the Marvel Universe that is important to read because it... uh, It affects the Marvel Universe in ways that I don't know that the editors were expecting that to when they were publishing Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl. 
uh, largely because it, it was being written by Ryan North and uh, who did the Adventure Time comics. Mm. So like, it's just going to be this fun side thing. It's like she takes on Galactus and wins in issue five. I did not know that there was an uh, Adventure Time connection. I might have made more of an effort to read it. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it, it's the same writer and artist team from Adventure Time that moved over and started doing Squirrel Girl. Mm. Um, but yeah, when she beats Galactus in like issue five, it's like, oh, that's funny. It's a throwaway thing. And then four years later, Galactus has switched sides and is starting to make amends for destroying planets. It's like, nope. That that happened because of Squirrel Girl. Like, you can tell me whatever you think you want to. It happened because of Squirrel Girl. Yeah. Because she walked into a fight with Galactus and went, I'm the unbeatable Squirrel Girl, so we can fight or we can talk this out because I've already won. <laughs> <laughs> that's how uh, she approaches every one of her battles kind of reminds me of a we'll get this cartoon in a bit there was a what if issue mm-hmm. that was literally what if Ghost Rider faced off against Galactus and it was like a two page story within a different like a, an anthology yeah, Ghost Rider just pen and stared him just looked Galactus in the eye and went look what you've done <laughs> observe your sins and like and Galactus goes mad and just just breaks apart and Ghost Rider goes on to be the spirit of vengeance. Yep. Yep. Um, it is space, fucking space motorcycle on that. <laughs> um, Kevin, it's time for Kevin to get out of it. <laughs> what? Oh, is he? Jerry Lewis is Glavin the Hunter. Kevin. Why do you say things that make us want to destroy you? Why do you look at you chase Denise out? She's not even on the show anymore. She's gone. She's just gone. Uh, There is a rumor that you see only a silhouette, but there's a rumor that uh, Matt Murdock is Peter Parker's attorney. Which actually makes sense even without multiverse shit. mm -hmm. I've heard that same rumor. Along with that, I also heard the rumor that... um, What's his name's Frank Castle is also supposed to be in this. I can see that because the Netflix Marvel series do are not separate from the MCU. They just weren't allowed to reference it. Right. That's why they always called the, the post Avengers the New York incident. Yep. The incident. The incident. Yeah. Um, and honestly, having Frank Castle take a pot shot at Peter Parker is very much in. In mm-hmm. genre, in canon, that's the Punisher was introduced in Spider-Man because he was hired to kill Spider-Man. Yep. John Bernthal. Thank you. I couldn't remember his name. The Kevin, Punisher you're... was hired to kill Spider-Man? Yeah. Yep. Back in like 75 or something. Huh. You can't protect her, Rick. Sorry. But he's not a cop. No. He was hired by, yeah. He was, and he was tricked into thinking Spider-Man. There's an was entire it? era where Spider-Man is basically painted as a villain through because of J. Jonah Jameson. Yep. Right. He flaunts the law, and and if the cops can't stop him, Frank Castle will. I mean, that's because that's Frank Castle's thing. Frank Castle exists because the system is a failure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm glad that's changed. Oh wait. <laughs> that's why I'm laughing. Well, I mean, that's. Still his point, there was that issue that came out a couple years ago where these two cops are like bragging on how much they like him and they show like his death's head sticker on their squad car and he loses their shit on them. In the comic. Yeah, he's like, nice. don't ever do, he like, he rips it off. He's like, don't ever do that again. He's like, I exist because you have failed. You should, he's like, you should hate me. You should not look up to me. I am an example of the broken system. And he's basically like, if I ever catch you doing that again, this is your warning mm-hmm. or you're the like you become the enemy oh yeah no and the creators of the punisher are like all these cops that use that death's head they have they completely miss the point of this character like 100 percent. right yes they do yeah. Yeah. now the the last thing that i want to mention about the trailer before we move on to our reviews of the shows are 
the thing that I haven't seen anyone talk about, why is it snowing in the middle of the Sanctum Sanctorum? I don't know, but I kind of like it. And I love that he's literally in sweatpants. I love when, when he's, sweatpants. But he, has to wear, but he has to wear the cape because the cape refuses to be <laughs> decided. Because mm-hmm. remember, it's not up to him. The cape and decides. It just, it just yep. pins itself to his puffy coat. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's the funniest goddamn image. Like, I'm glad, I'm glad we, we got to that. before. Oh, God, that was so funny. <laughs> um, I'm glad to see more of um, uh, Strange in the in the Marvel universe because it was pretty much his movie, and then Endgame, Ragnarok, and uh, Infinity, got or Infinity War, mm-hmm. and those were just very short blips. And I'm I'm guessing the end of the, if there's going to be a well, I mean, there's always going to be a post credits. The Spider Man one has to be Multiverse of Madness time. Oh yeah. You know, like in every way. Um, I actually rewatched Spider Man Two, the Raimi one today. Mm-hmm. God damn it, my pan, I my jazz for his Doctor Strange. It's gonna be so it's, good. It's gonna be bonkers. Mm-hmm. It's just gonna be bonkers. I I do have to wonder uh, who's gonna be the connective tissue in these these three movies leading up to next year, like. At the beginning what of the Infinity Saga, Shang-Chi, you mean Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi and and... yeah, like who is who's that character that's going to come in? Like, to me, I would love it if it's Sam. Okay, like the Winter Soldier, Sam, or no? Oh my God, that's Bucky. Captain Sam, America. Uh, Captain, Captain America. Captain America. Duh. The new Captain America. Right. I don't. I don't see how he ties into the the content of these films, though. Except he would be the one. Right. There's, he, a, there's always the been new... like a Tony Stark or a a, a Nick Fury oh, right. in the right. like the post credits, kind of tying, helping to tie things together. I was thinking, like to a degree, even uh, Black Widow mm-hmm. was a little bit of that early, early on. Yep. Same with Phil Coulson. Right. I, right. Ah, oh, God. I, I, I kind of have a thought that it could be Jimmy Woo. And that's just me having a holdout for a fucking Agents of Atlas movie so bad. <laughs> Jimmy Woo can connect those three. I'm totally he's, down for more because he's Park. he's kind of he's not he's no Sam L. Jackson in terms of attitudes. He have a different attitude, but he's kind of the Nick Fury of this era now because mm-hmm. he's had his he's been involved one way or another and and everything within Phase Four as it leads up to it. He's the one who kind of always just happens to be there, mm-hmm. you know. So I could see Jimmy Woo, which uh, that'd be great. Especially, I the like end, the idea of it being more agency type rather than another hero. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I like the idea that he's been kind of a goofy character, and then finally, like whatever, at the end of what really leads into all this, you get you mainly get the attitude of like, no, I just had to play goofy. I have been running a clandestine secret agency for 500 years. Mm-hmm. But, but Jimmy, you're, um, you're 43 years old. Am I? You know? <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if he presents that heel turn or that, that, uh, that face turn that he's really this other person, um, that's got to come in the end of Shang-Chi. Irma, stop That'd it. be cool. Yeah. I'd be down. Because that would be the movie to do it in. Based yeah, on... the, Eter- the Eternals can kind of live on its own for a little bit. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to tie in. You know, so. Mm-hmm. They do and seem Kevin to be Fahey, doing their own thing, so. Yeah, and Kevin Feige did say that for the most part, state phase, yeah, phase four will be a lot of standalone mini arcs. Like, he's, he's like, I don't want to do that 10-year Avenger lead up again. Like, I no. just don't want, we don't want to do it. Nope. So. A lot to keep up with. Yeah. Should we roll into our uh, our animation reviews? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what if? What if? Yeah, let's do what if. Um. So I cried like a big baby. I didn't cry, but man, I was really touched by the whole episode. It was emotional for me. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, haven't there been two? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What if? What if T'Challa? Uh, had been Star Lord. Had been Star Lord. Okay. I heard episode. What was the other one? I'm already blanking. 
Captain Agent Carter. Carter. Captain Carter. Right. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, because you guys already did that one last week. Right. Yes. Right. Okay, cool. So just the one. Um, I did not cry, but it was extremely wholesome. Yes. It was. It, it was amazing to see that if you just change that one character and send T'Challa out into space, T'Challa fixes space. <laughs> and it talking. makes perfect sense too, because because Peter Quill is a broken little boy. He's got he got problems before they picked him up. Mm-hmm. But T'Challa was like a whole healthy, happy person with you know a loving community mm-hmm. and and sage advice about you know like growing up to be a leader one day. Mm-hmm. And, and already he, wanted to do more. Yeah, and so he he took that with him. Um, yeah, and then like influenced influenced his surroundings for the better. In mm-hmm. like, it, I, and they make it so like, oh, offhand, like, oh yeah, and then we talk Thanos out of genociding the universe. Um, I think like, that's like, 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 yeah. He, although he still thinks it's not a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, it's, the it's the easy running to joke keep of arguing that your... sounds like genocide. <laughs> keep arguing your idea would have worked when you never have to do your idea mm-hmm. um, <laughs> well, it's that was it, it, it i'm not gonna say it blew my mind but it's just like it, it exactly like you said came like just, like you change one one thing and uh like it has these like it has this domino effect mm-hmm. meanwhile peter quill not a great person intrinsically so he he was just, he was influenced by the, the ravagers yeah. right. rather than the other way around. Um, and I love that they just sort of leave you with that cliffhanger of like, well, if if it had been T'Challa, <laughs> then this is where Peter Quill would have been, uh, you know, eventually. Which is not good. No. No. That no. pretty much says that that universe is doomed. Yeah. The- because dad's going to influence and he's going to think that's great. Right. Yeah. That, yeah, and then he's going to trigger have... trigger that doomsday. Yeah. Yeah. Not every what if, if you continue following it forward, has a happy ending. The no. story's made, but then it's like, but unfortunately, that also led to this. Right. You know, yeah. The, the, at least the backstory is that, um, shoot, uh, Rooker's character. Um, uh, the Ravager. Yeah. What's oh my his God. name? Yondu. 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 Yondu still has information about ego that he can always share. So it That's gives true. them a, a fighting chance. Yeah. And you know, you've got Thanos on your team. So he's not <laughs> a bad guy. Yeah. Also, I think you learn a little bit more about who Yondu is uh, in that, in this example too, because in both the you know the 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 prime universe and then this this what if version both times he looks at this young boy like a son obviously mm-hmm. he had in his heart parental aspirations and it was really less about what kid ended up on his ship so much as like he wanted that bond right right which i that i thought was particularly endearing it was um, for me, the, the standout thing was, um, Nebula's nickname for T'Challa. <laughs> was it Cha-Cha? Yeah. Cha-Cha. Cha-Cha. I that. Also, uh, I'm also a big fan of like film noir looking at Nebula. I thought I liked bald Nebula. This is also a nice more look for Nebula. At I appreciated no point. that she had a personality. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the personality has always been there. It's just buried underneath anger. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Let me let me rephrase that. I appreciate that we got a chance to see like who she could have been if mm-hmm. not for all the pain and torture that she endured in the Prime Universe. Yes, and, um, and I think that's the, the point of this is giving all of these actors. It's like, how would you like to play the same character but different? It's like totally. I, I'll bet Br- Josh Brolin reveled in being able to play <laughs> this version of Thanos. Um, and same with Karen Gillan playing this version of Nebula. At no point did I ever think that 
Nebula was a blonde. Me neither, but it works. It yeah, works. It does. It's like, oh, blonde bombshell, femme fatale, yeah. Nebula. Yep. Uh, we got we got some Seth Green again. Mm-hmm. You're out of luck. Oh, always yeah. go duck. <laughs> Nobody says that. <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure yeah, they pretty say sure. that no pretty no sure no one does one that's so it. great you know i i always like you know, i love me some howard the duck so that was great having the, that in there the voice casting on this one was great it's like oh no it was everyone everyone came back <laughs> yeah i think everyone came back yeah they did like did they even kurt russell even kurt russell uh benicio like was it, hilarious <laughs> It was great. It's like, how would you like to play the collector, but really play the collector? But okay. really <laughs> cut loose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I did like in the background of the collector's museum, um, the game, the game master's ship is in it from Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. He's got it. Oh yeah. Um, you know, having Korg's arm was a little dark, but you know, <laughs> still a little good. bit. Little bit. That was a little dark, but okay. That was pretty fun. Well, he also had Nolner and the Shield. Right. Oh, I missed yeah. that. Oh yeah. It's like yeah. oh things. And was going able to well use Molnir, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, he is the collector, so whatever. Yeah. I, I have no idea what this week's is about. I didn't watch any of the trailers. So yeah, I don't know what it is. I know we're getting Marvel Zombies eventually. I know we're getting a what if Gamora was basically Thanos. Yep. Thanos. I, I think it I think it was very telling that the three that were missing, well, I guess four uh that were missing from this episode were Rocket, Groot, Gamora, and Mantis. But right. Manta was Mantis was missing because she's still with Ego. Yeah. Which makes sense. I like right. Drax as the bartender. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was good. And he still has his family. That's mm-hmm. who they didn't get back. He wasn't able to do it. Who? Uh, uh, Batista? Uh, yeah, they'd mentioned it. He's not in it. Oh, okay. That that's the one they couldn't get back to do voice work. Yeah. But yeah, oh. it's a lot of fun. It's, you know. Yeah, I dug it. Good. Yeah, I wasn't actually sure it was the same character for a minute because yeah. the voice was different. Mm. No, still Drex. Yeah. I, 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 it, after a second, it becomes evident again because he has his wife and his daughter. Um, but just just to, just for a moment there, I'm like, is that is that Drax or just another of his man, race? Of his yeah. race, yeah. Um, who else? I feel like there was. I feel like we're missing something out of this one. I don't think so. No. Oh no, that was no. That's a, that's kind of everything. I was I was thinking about. Oh yeah, the um, part way through the episode, you think, oh no, uh, Wakanda is gone now, because that's what. Oh right. That's right. what that's, that's what, what Yondu tells him. And I was like, oh, they couldn't defend themselves because he does have a, a necklace that is uh, similar in style to the, you know, the one that activates the Black Panther suit. And I was like, oh, they couldn't defend themselves because he's got it. But then I remembered, no, because when you first are introduced to Ch- T'Challa and T'Chaka, T'Chaka, thank you. I was mm-hmm. so close, but that was not it. Um, T'Chaka is still the the bearer of of the suit yeah. and he only, is still the black as, panther yeah only only as only when he dies does mm-hmm. it move does it get passed on to t'challa so that wasn't it um and, and it was a lie anyway. um, i'm actually thinking this week it might be uh the killmonger one mm. oh that will be because they because they keep talking about how they have recast tony stark i'm like they just didn't get robert Downey jr to do the voice of fucking tony stark and what if they're going for clickbait shit like mm-hmm. Right. They're never gonna recast Robert Downey Jr. if for some reason they ever bring back a live action our our Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. They're right. just not like knock it off comic book resources. Look at you, screen rant. Yeah. 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 Clickbait. Because it's what? It would be Iron Killmonger? Isn't that I'm trying to remember the Killmonger one? Anyway. I don't know. I don't remember either. 
Yeah. Z- Zombies and Gamora are the only other two things that I know that are going on with this. Yeah. I thought Gamora was going to show up in this one. And it's like, nope, this was solely Star-Lord. So Yeah. Well, I think because the what ups always have to be self-contained. They can't connect to another one. Mm-hmm. But that's the whole point. Like, why connect them? Because they're all meant to be different takes. Sure. So, yeah. Uh, and then we roll into Lower Decks. Yeah. With, um, what the heck is this one called? When the walls fell? Because <laughs> it's... Yes. It. Yep. Yeah. Um, AKA the most Easter eggs of any Lower Decks episode of all time. I mean, how could you not? I watched it four times just to try and catch everything. I I had to read through an article that was linked. Uh, I did a lot of pausing. <laughs> in order to, to catch up. Like, there were things that I certainly caught. Because um, I had a friend text me early in the day. It's like, hey, let me know when you've watched Lower Decks. Because I need someone <laughs> to explain to me what the giant skeleton in the TOS uniform yes. was. Yeah. That's spot 2.0. That's exactly what I said when I watched the episode. I'm like, oh, that's uh, from the animated series when they clone Spock, but they make him giant. They make him a giant. Oh. And he's like, Plus oh, the giant big tribbles. what? <laughs> that's a good yeah. episode, too. It is. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I was talking to a coworker today who had finally watched the episode. It's like, yeah, you get an extra Boimler. It's like, yeah, but they were leading up to that the entire episode because the whole episode is about cloning. It's mm-hmm. like, where it was like well there's they talk about that episode but they also bring up Kalis and Kalis is in TNG as a clone as a clone mm-hmm. oh, yeah. uh, they and then they also reference Kalis again when there's the diorama for the Savage Curtain <laughs> which has a duplicate I, of Abraham Lincoln with, who still has a beard on his skull which is hilarious yeah and a spear <laughs> going through yeah yeah <laughs> Um. Yeah, and there, there were other little things. It's like, yeah, this was this was a clone episode. This is all. This whole yeah. thing was about cloning. Oh yeah. man, I'm gonna have to watch it again. Um. Yeah, there's also um, uh, Doctor Crusher's uh, Rowan ghost sex scandal is in the mm-hmm. background. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so that's in there. It's just there's so many things. But what I love it is that this episode is so joke heavy, like one liners and visual gags. But it also has like one of the most heartfelt treatises on what kind of Trek is going through right now. Mm-hmm. That whole thing with Boimler, he's like, you know what? I liked Enterprise D. I liked that they just explored. I liked it when Riker just played the trombone. And for as much as I think Discovery deals with some really good emotional content, it's still very pew, 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 which it just yep. kind of is. Um, most of Trek is. Most I of sh- modern I Trek is. I shared an article, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, sometime in the past week that touched on this, where that this episode basically serves to sort of poke fun at, um, if not sort of chastise. Uh, a lot of the modern Star Trek for for getting a little bit too military too focused, yeah, a little, a little too pew pew, and a lot a lot less discovery and exploration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, which you know is 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 an argument that you can have in both directions because I am one of those people who who discovered Star Trek as a whole because of initial interest in the the modern films. Mm-hmm. And you, those are undeniably a lot more pew pew than than otherwise. They're all pew pew. And they and yeah. the thing is that the movies almost have to be. That's why mm-hmm. Trek, I think, always does better on TV than film. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, that's true. Like an uh, an episodic that's a little bit more um, cerebral, a little bit more introspective, is not going to always translate. Uh, on film especially not with you know like big budgets and all the you know like the sci-fi technology that goes into right. us on star trek so yeah the one time that was really of trying to be the show was the most in pic- the motion picture mm-hmm. and that bombed i love it although you can argue that star trek beyond for all it's like shoot 'em up stuff is pretty damn close to a tos episode it is it it's is really the- close to 
So it's writing that line. It's it's giving yeah. you that like TOS, you know, chill vibes while also being a fun, exciting pew pew film. Yeah. It is why it's one of my favorites. Like it it genuinely is. Yeah, me too. And that's that's a way that they've like managed to, you know, serve long-term fans of you know like, fans of what like what star trek originated as while mm -hmm. also catering to a modern audience some of whom are both and and uh, I, I would like to make a clarification is that, is that what i want um i think it's the perception of what the modern audience is by movie executives because i don't know that that's actually true of the modern audience i think they want lots of things out of their entertainment and non-stop action could be one of them but not necessarily right like it, it's the like it's playing to the lowest common denominator all the time and we've got to stop doing that in general and it would give us better entertainment <laughs> as well no you're right i totally agree because I, I i consider myself to be a like a modern audience i am i was not wildly drawn in to the original star trek i said i mm -hmm. watched the movies i was like this is interesting eventually i got around to trying to watch you know tos and it's it's very dry and it's very slow and uh, it w it did not compel me and I would fall asleep more often than not. Granted, I was doing this like at the end of my evenings on like work nights and stuff, so I was not priming myself, you know, to like really engage with it either. But neither was it doing any heavy lifting to engage me because it's it's a little bit dated, you know. That's, that's part of the issue with it. So. That's why it it's goes, hard to to watch things that are older without you always feel like you have to do a certain amount of research about um, the era to understand the context of when things are made like i like i always do that with trek when people are like watching it and it's like i don't understand what they were trying to do with this like uh, i have a coworker watching enterprise for the first mm -hmm. time and they're like, this is really weird. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? It's like it debuted a week after September 11th, 2001. And they're yeah. like, never mind. Meanwhile, that's right. like shit. And I'm like, fuck Enterprise. This is the worst. That is, that is my era, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, like my period of enlightenment. And yet, um, yeah, if, if, you know, if not for Karen curating episodes for me to watch, and like you know like the ones that like are are the best written that have you know like a good a good story to follow or and or, or jeffrey or, coombs and, <laughs> and or have like things that i can relate to mm -hmm. um which you know not a lot of stuff from the 60s is something that has something that i'm going to relate to um so yes I, I, all this to say like yeah it, it's you're right it, you're right like the modern audience does not mean like one single thing it's and, not a monolith. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. No things and, are. And even if it, and even if it was like one thing, just a bunch of pew pew and explosions is probably not it. Yeah. Like if you wanted to get really really reductive, that still wouldn't be the answer. Mm -hmm. In my opinion. Oh no, you're right for sure. Um. Yeah, I. I like where this will also allow Lower Decks to go moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, I knew they were going to get two Boimlers. <laughs> yeah, and they, if they stick to Trek lore, cloned Boimler is going to be a little dangerous. Like, I really want him, next time we see him, I really want him to have a goatee. Like, so badly. I expect it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And just the fact that, like, you know, they're they have that moment of like, okay, well, one of you has to go back to the Cerritos. Only one of you can stay here. The other Boimler was like, okay, I'm staying. He's, yeah. he's the edgy one. Absolutely, he's the edgy yeah. one. And it's only going to get worse from here. Whereas, like, I, thought we, I thought we were both going to step forward and make Riker pick. Nah. And that's, oh, and no. that's, I, that's I Boimler a classic. 
Right. Well, and that's also very Thomas Riker of the Boimler clone. Mm-hmm. I want adventure. <laughs> the reason why you don't need a Thomas Riker now is because the Riker of Lower Decks is acting more like OG Riker, which is Thomas Riker. Mm-hmm. And see, I don't have enough background on the whole Thomas Riker situation to really, you know, put well, out a he, thesis on. He's, he's only in two episodes. Yeah. Well, and he's in prison. And he's in prison. Uh, they could run into him in Lower Decks. I mean, they've already established uh, the precedent for it, sure. Yeah, he could still be in prison. But so you're saying that like Thomas Riker was the edgy one, mm-hmm. but now that's, but now that was, William Riker is more like young William Riker, they he's don't acting need the like edgy Thomas. Yeah, he's acting like he used to be when he was younger, very ambitious, like charging ahead. Mm-hmm. That was the whole thing about second chances when they beam up Thomas Riker. That's a Riker who still thinks he's a lieutenant on like whatever ship it was and full of ambition. And he meets a Will who's pretty comfortable being on the Enterprise D and being first officer. And he likes this now. And Thomas Growing is Growing into like, his responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Thomas is like, what happened to us being the youngest captain ever? You know? That's and like, when, like, you- <laughs> when he like- even like hits on Deanna and she's all like, oh yeah, this guy, I forgot about this right you know? and, <laughs> and like that makes Will kind of annoyed and you know, oh, and the, next time you, the next time you see him was on DS9 where he literally has, he's joined the Maquis and he steals the Defiant. <laughs> um, yep, that goes which over is, Will. Which is so great because what is it? He literally just like seduces Kira to get a tour of the Defiant. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she's like, I've met, she's like, I've met Will Record before, but I didn't know he was so, you know, Jazzy is like, oh, I've heard stories. And she shows, and like he go, and like he literally steals a defiant, and it's the greatest reveal ever as Will Riker peels off his beard to where it's just a just his goatee, and he goes, How's it going? Because he's evil now and he's stealing the defiant. Oh yeah, no, it's good. It's a good gift now, too. People have turned that into yeah. I just, <laughs> How have I not seen this? That's a good yeah. question. <laughs> that is a good question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, now I kind of wish I had to watch those uh, those Thomas Riker episodes before this episode of Lower Nets, just to like just for that added like meat. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, also we were talking about like how how much this episode is about clones and all of the different. Easter eggs that are related to episodes about clones, and I didn't know any of that. Mm-hmm. Not that it took away from my enjoyment, but no, it's still fun. Well, now you can go back and, and watch some of these things. Mm-hmm. That that's also the joy of Lower Decks is going. Wait, what were they talking about? Oh, I remember yeah. that episode. I need to go rewatch that again. We totally forget about or, the first Tamarian in Starfleet. Yeah, the, uni- the Universal Translator has to translate. His his phrases into act into Federation common or whatever. Mm-hmm. Except for when he can't think of the the, the word, so he oh, has yeah. to fall back on. What is yeah. the Garmak and Jalada and Tanagra? Yeah. It's like work together. And I love yes. the doctor. What a, I can turn back a lot of dolls. Just getting back to the ship. I love that this doctor on the Cerritos <laughs> has literally seen everything. Like nothing shocks her. Mm-hmm. Like nothing. She's like, ah, give it time. I can do it. I also like that the. This is not a toy. Do not pick me up. (laughs) He'll be fine in an hour. (laughs) Yeah. How do you know that? I know. It's like, (laughs) okay. You're the crankiest cat. I don't. Well, even in her first, even in this season two opener, I loved it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She's all like, we got to stop him with the strange energies. Do you want him to go all Gary Mitchell? What do the Enterprise do? Dropped a rock on him. I'm going to go get a a rock. (laughs) I love when she's like, I'll go get a boulder. (laughs) No! <laughs> and then at the end, dropped a boulder on him. Boulder. Yep. I, I did appreciate that uh, their ship counselor also takes the same seat on the bridge that uh, mm-hmm. Counselor Troy did and also follows suit and wears whatever the hell they want onto the bridge. Yep. <laughs> There's no uniform. Oh, no. I hadn't. Yeah, ah. he, he's just a giant bird that dresses like he's a community college english professor mm-hmm. and everything is a food reference yes mm-hmm. will you stop it with the food analogies <laughs> yeah it's so good well kevin just or sack said that 
Thomas Riker is the Ben Riley of Star Trek. Oh. That's rude. Not wrong, but rude. Well, I think that's a show. I think that's a show, guys. Yeah. Good to get the whole crew back together. Do you guys do you guys think that that's a show? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Why? Did you have something? No. You guys just both said the same thing, one right after oh. the other. Oh. I'm like, I wonder what you guys are thinking. I'm I'm thinking I was looking at the clock. <laughs> yes, that me too. <laughs> and what we've been jammering for an hour and a half. Like jammering. It's true. Yammering. Jammering. So with no, that, it's jammering now. Yeah. Jammering, yammering, clamoring. Yam yam. Jam jam ham dum clam. Yam, yam. I'm Aaron Duran. <laughs> I'm Dana Rita. And I'm Cable Hashitani. And we'll yammer you all next week. Recall Ted Wheeler, please, for the love of God. Total recall PDX. Do it. So intense. <laughs>